GM friends, and welcome back to another episode on the Friends Validator Show. If this is your first video, I'm your host, Yuri Maibom, and this show is a that brings together crypto pioneers' exciting projects in a thriving community. Today, I'm joined by Fischer Zhu, the co-founder of Babylon. Babylon is an upcoming proof-of-stake blockchain that enables Bitcoin staking. Today's episode aims to provide a comprehensive overview of Babylon, the evolving Bitcoin ecosystem, Babylon's novel approach, Bitcoin maximalism, and much more. So let us not waste much more time and get this episode started. And with that being said, Fischer, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much, Dre, for, for having me. And think, hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. It's my pleasure to meet with everyone here and share uh, the story of Babylon. Thank you very much. Yes, the pleasure is all mine. Um, but before we shed some light on the history and the story of Babylon, let's start with your personal story. So how did you end up at Babylon? Um, what were your steps before? So maybe like a brief introduction uh, from your end to get a better understanding. Yes, yeah, sure, sure, sure. So I did my bachelor degree in, in China and did my master's and PhD degrees in Australia. And my PhD uh, area was network information theory and security. Yeah. Uh, in the last year of my PhD, I invented a decentralized media delivery platform and patented it and then sold it to Dolby Laboratories in the US. And then finished my PhD and joined University of Southern California to do postdoc on decentralized system security, uh, security uh, research, aka blockchain security research. Yeah. And my a uh, postdoc supervisor, uh, Professor uh, uh, Salman Absmeer, was a uh, David student. So that's how I get to know Professor David Shea from Stanford University. And then since then, I have been collaborating with David in uh, both academic research and blockchain industry consulting. And this is how I get to know the blockchain pro uh, world in a, at the production level rather than just the, the academic research. Yeah. Then at the end of uh, 2021, and uh, David and myself uh, came up with the concept of security sharing. Yeah, also credits to Eigenlayer's founder, uh, Swiran. Yeah, we were doing research together. So we came up the, with the concept of security sharing where the bigger chains, such as Bitcoin or Ethereum, can actually share or rent their security to the smaller chains and decentralized infrastructures to help them improve their security and in turn improve their TBL and to help them help them grow. Yeah. So we came up with this vision and we came up with our first security sharing protocol. So we decided to uh, yeah, uh, co-found the Bob the project at early 2022. And now here we are two and a half years in. Yeah, I can very well remember uh, David's keynote at Cosmoverse 2022, uh, introducing Babylon to the world for the very, very first yeah. time. So uh, yeah. you mentioned this security sharing aspect. So let's start from a very high level here to ensure that we get everyone on board. So Babylon is a is a POS blockchain itself, right? So leveraging yeah. the Cosmos SDK, all of these uh, functionalities. Yeah. But then you go ahead and help to increase kind of Bitcoin's functionality in order to lend out security to other chain-like applications. So can you talk a little bit more about that, how this uh, works and where the Bitcoin staking aspect comes into play? Yeah, yeah, sure. So I would like to first address what does security sharing mean, okay? So secure, when we talk about security, we are talking about consensus security. For a POS chain, there should be a chain of blocks instead of a forest of blocks, because we are talking about a chain, not a forest, right? And also, uh, whatever blocks generated should not be, uh, should be immutable, cannot be forked, cannot be reverted. So no double spending, no forking. So, yeah. so when we talk about security, we are talking about the consensus level security. We are not talking about the wallet security, saving you secret keys properly. That's not the security we're talking about. We are talking about the security of the chain itself. Okay, so a POS systems such as Cosmos chains are super secure, but as a POS system, it has its inherent 
a security weakness that cannot be solved by itself, no matter how you uh, patch it, such as a long range attack where the stakers first withdraw their uh, with unbound their stake and go back to an older block and create a fork there. Yeah, this is not solvable by POS itself. And also an another issue is that POS chains, especially when they bootstrap, their market cap is usually quite small. So that even if all the native tokens are staked, the security level of the POS chain measured as how much money is needed to overtake, say, at least 33% of the stake, it's relatively small so that its security level is low. Okay, so look, in Bobblem, what we try to do or to achieve is to overcome the inherent security weakness of POS systems and decentralized systems in general by leveraging Bitcoin security. For example, for the weakness where I mentioned about the long range attack, we introduced the Bitcoin timestamping protocol to solve it so that uh, Cosmos chains, its stake unbounding time can be reduced from 21 days to only one day. Then we also have the Bitcoin, Bitcoin staking protocol, which allows Bitcoin to become a staking asset for any POS chains, such as Cosmos chains, so that Cosmos chains can bootstrap themselves with a much, much higher security level then its native token staking alone can achieve. Yeah. So problem is about uh, Bitcoin security sharing and we develop a suite of security sharing protocols uh, to help the Cosmos chains. And we implement our protocol at a POS chain itself, which is the problem chain. So how can I imagine it precisely in regards to the Bitcoin staking aspect? Is there like kind of a module that is on chain where you deposit your Bitcoin in and you lock it up and then like very similar to how Eigenlayer is doing it. So you basically lock your Bitcoin in a module on the Babylon chain and then you basically rent out the security to other applications. Is this Would this be the right uh, the right way to put it? Almost. So I know Eigenlayer is a handy example to, to explain staking and restaking, but we should keep in mind that Eigenlayer is actually about restaking. What does restaking mean? Restaking means something is already staked. And then Eigenlayer allow the asset to be restaked to secure more things. Okay. But Bitcoin itself, it's not staked yet. Okay, so before restaking, there is a staking part of it. So in if we use uh, ETH as an uh, analogy, then ETH token should be first staked and then restaked to Eigenlayer. Okay, so what Eigenlayer does for ETH is like step one to 10. But what Bobbinon does, it's a little bit more. It's from zero to 10. It allows Bitcoin to be first staked like the zero to one step, which is the hardest step. And then you allow Bitcoin to be restaked, which is the one to 10 step similar to Eigenlayer. So Eigenlayer does step one to 10 for ETH, Boblin does step zero to 10 for Bitcoin. Yeah. And then in terms of staking itself, okay, locking Bitcoin to Boblin chain is a no go because that will introduce counterparty risks. But on the other hand, Bitcoin itself doesn't have any smart contract or, or on-chain code that allow Bitcoin holders to lock their Bitcoin in a similar way as how ETH is locked on the Ethereum chain. So overcoming the lack of smartness of Bitcoin and make staking possible, it's the core innovation of the Boblin BTC staking protocol. I'm happy to expand on this with uh, through the follow-up questions you may have. Yeah, sounds good. But before we touch base on that, so my f my first um, impression was when I heard about this is, I mean, you also operate in the Bitcoin community, obviously. So what was the yeah. initial feedback that you earned from the community? Because at the end of the day, 
there are a lot of Bitcoin maximalists who don't like proof of stake at all. So um, yeah, what was the broader reaction like? Because essentially you use Bitcoin in such a way to enhance proof of stake in some way. So what was the reaction like? Because all of a sudden you take the holy POW asset to secure POS chains, which uh, sounds a little bit controversial, yeah. right? Yeah, so the first reaction was, no way this is impossible because everyone knows how limited Bitcoin is in terms of uh, program programmability and your smartness. So yeah, first reaction was impossible, but then we show them the proofs, they, they get it. Then some people uh, start to appreciate our solution because we actually introduce the third major utility for Bitcoin. Okay. So far, there are only two utilities for Bitcoin. First, as a storage of value, just waiting for Bitcoin to appreciate doing nothing. And second, it's for payment. Very slow payment, but if you use Lightning, it can be a little bit faster, but nothing else. There are some Bitcoin utility or yield generating protocols, but all these, all the protocols require the Bitcoin holder to actually send their Bitcoin to a trusted third party, AKA custody or something equivalent, or, or if you use a bridge, then you need to trust the bridge team, okay? So Bitcoin holders hate this because not to your keys, not to your coins, right? Bitcoin is digital gold to the backseas. They, they'd rather die rather than giving their Bitcoin away to a third party for some utility, okay, right? So when they first heard about Bitcoin staking, first it's impossible. And later they realized, oh yes, so problem Bitcoin staking is actually trustless because our protocol does not require Bitcoin holders to give their Bitcoin to any third party. This is very important. So it is trustless and self-custodial to, uh, to the Bitcoin maxis and actually to many, many Bitcoin holders. This is very, very important. The security of their Bitcoin is much more important than having any utility or generating any yield. And since we solved this problem for them, uh, pure uh, mathematically and cryptographically, so they are more, uh, they welcome our protocol much better than anything else. Yeah, and you also said something that is uh, very, very interesting people said that's that's not possible and i mean we have seen this in the past couple of years that people didn't really think about working in the bitcoin ecosystem or building something because bitcoin was associated with a very static infrastructure like basically just an asset that you hold to hedge against inflation that's it um yeah lightning was a little bit put behind in the past three years, but all of a sudden people start to talk about Bitcoin layer twos, obviously Babylon. There was a big Bitcoin day in, in Denver, I remember. So many builders were there. So how do you observe that development? Because in the past two or three years, it was more like, okay, on which layer one in the DeFi ecosystem will I build on, on Solana or on Polygon or on Avalanche or do I build my own Cosmos chain or even Ethereum? So how do you observe the spike in builders coming to the Bitcoin ecosystem and start building now? Yeah, so I, yeah, very good question. Indeed, as, in case the listeners, you don't know what's the name of the conference, it is called Bitcoin Renaissance. Happened in, <laughs> yeah, yeah, in March in uh, East Denver. The, the Bitcoin Renaissance actually happened about, uh, one year ago, last year, like 2023, where the ordinals become white, became a viral, viral. Yeah, for the very, very long time, people thought it, there's nothing you can do on Bitcoin. But somehow, ordinals, and NFTs, yeah, yeah, bring attention back to Bitcoin. And also, like the ETH layer two uh, design and ZK roll up, uh, optimistic roll up, like the Design is mature, the opportunities are all already been taken, so there's not much growth opportunity 
on the on the eco uh, ETH ecosystem. So people st start to turn their attention to other ecosystems for new opportunities. Okay, then Bob Long really showed that indeed it is possible to do something smart with Bitcoin. So this gives people like uh, founders, builders, developers, researchers some confidence and inspiration that oh, Bitcoin can actually yeah be smart enough to do allow people to do something and then given that bitcoin is the like most famous crypto asset in the, in the entire space there's then there's no reason for people not to try to build new infrastructure and new projects and interesting things on top of bitcoin so yeah that's why starting from this year we see a lot of new projects around bitcoin interesting and also observing this development is um yeah very exciting because as mentioned in the past few years there was nothing much going on in the bitcoin uh, bitcoin community and all of a sudden everyone is talking about building applications on on bitcoin or at yeah. least in the broader bitcoin ecosystem including babylon yeah. speaking about that say i would like to launch a chain like let's just put it like a chain like application what would be your pitch to convince me to leverage Babylon's infrastructure? What would be the pitch for a builder to go ahead and build a chain-like application on top of Babylon besides the security that you would get from the Bitcoin ecosystem? So um, what are some interoperability puzzle pieces that uh, you would get? Is there like a bridge that allows me to get native Bitcoin to my application or do I have IBC um, availability because uh, Babylon is a Cosmos SDK blockchain? So what are some uh, advantages that make me want to build on top of Babylon? Yeah, sure. So for a project to be successful, there are, I would say there are three key factors first is security second is user third is liquidity so boblin can bring the project all the three first bitcoin level security second all the bitcoin users and three bitcoin liquidity yeah so if a chain like application integrate with boblin then through boblin's btc staking protocol and timestamping protocol, the security level of the chain will be much higher than its peers that, that do not use Bobby. So that you can actually, the, the project can actually convince users to use it and put asset into the chain because it knows, yes, the security level is high. And second, then because this project use Bitcoin security, but naturally, Bitcoin holders will actually stake or restake to this project so that Bitcoin holders will become users of this project. Like Bitcoin has the, the widest, widest spectrum of users in the world. So that having Bitcoin users to be your users, you don't actually need to bootstrap your, your own community and user base from scratch. You can just leverage the Bitcoin community. Yeah. And third, Bitcoin liquidity, which is what we are working working with the liquid staking uh, protocols and also doing research by ourselves, so that uh, we can bring Bitcoin as a liquid asset to all the POS systems and infrastructures that integrate with Bobler, so that when you launch your system, there will already be Bitcoin liquidity on your chain. That's a very convincing argument, especially, yeah, I mean, users and TVL is more or less the same thing, kind of, if you want to put it like this, because you need users in order to, to get TVL. Yeah. Um, yeah. But what about the interoperable? So, so my application, if I would launch a chain like application on top of Babylon, I would get native, uh, native, native BTC to my chain. Is this correct? Uh, you mean stick to your chain or bridge to your chain? Bridged, for example, via, uh, via, for example, if I would have like a DeFi, um, I don't know, a DeFi application on top of Babylon, um, where I want to put Bitcoin into a liquidity pool, are we talking about native BTC here or do I need to build my own bridge? Yeah, 
then we are talking about liquid staking token, big Bitcoins through LST projects, not the native Bitcoins, because the native Bitcoin bridge does not exist because of the limitation of Bitcoin. Yeah. So solving the native Bitcoin bridge is like the holy grail or the crown jewelry of any Bitcoin utility. So there hasn't been any such bridge yet understand yeah um just uh, wanted to uh to make that clear um and then in in regards to to other stuff so um if you would uh, just to understand what the benefits really are of uh building on top of babylon so is it like a similar game to launching an avs on top of eigenlayer so could i also for example go ahead and launch an own cosmos sdk blockchain and for example say okay I want to get secured by Babylon by 15%. I want to leverage interchain security by another 15%. So can I basically go to different security providers, including Babylon, to combine my on-chain security with, for example, Babylon's um, Babylon set? Yeah, sure. So you can launch a Cosmos Cosmos Zoom, yeah, and then integrate with Babylon to enjoy Bitcoin staking. Yeah. Then in terms of the relation with ICS, I think it's a, a bit blurry at the moment because if I understand correctly, ICS V1 basically will ask the Cosmos Hub validators to also become the validators of the consumer zone. Okay, so the security happens at the tenement level or comic BFT level. But when we talk about Bitcoin security, we actually Bitcoin will add another layer of consensus on top of Comet BFT, which we call as finality round. Yeah. So in terms of security, they are at different layers. So uh, at high level, they should not be interfering with each other and can exist together. Interesting. Yeah, um, very interesting how basically the whole shared security game becomes much 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 more diverse and uh, and and broad but um yeah we we drew some comparisons with the abs ecosystem already um we also got some questions from the DeFi dojo community and one question was can you explain the value proposition of an abs using babylon how is it differentiated from other restaking platforms. Can you share how many AVSs you are in dialogue with? What are some examples of AVSs building on Babylon? Okay, it's a very long question. What's, what was the first one? The first uh, question was, can you explain the value proposition of an AVS also using uh, Babylon? And uh, maybe talk about if, they, if you are in, in a dialogue with some of them already. Yeah, sure. So as I mentioned a little bit earlier, by integrating with Boblin, the ABS will enjoy Bitcoin security, will get Bitcoin users, and potentially also get Bitcoin liquidity. Okay. Then compare with like other restaking protocols, I don't think there's anything that is Bitcoin restaking. Boblin is the only one. So if you want me, want me to do comparison, it's really a comparison between Bitcoin staking and ETH staking and risk Yeah. So it's more like a ideological problem rather than finance, an economic problem. Yeah. What I can say is that Bitcoin currently does not have any meaningful yield. Most of the Bitcoin are just sitting there idle, doing nothing. So the price to attract Bitcoin is cheaper than other asset. My Bitcoin holders currently earn zero in zero yield, right? So if there is uh, something that allow them to say earn say two, three percent yield with almost no risk, then they will be very happy to do that. Yeah. Okay, so yeah this this is my answer to your question. Yes, question. it is. And, yeah. Yeah. And in terms of Sorry, go. Sorry. No, no, I just want to say, yeah, the second question uh, was like, uh, yeah. if you're in dialogue with some of them already. Yeah, so currently our focus of integration are the following three. First, Cosmos, Zoom, Cosmos Zooms. 
second ETH rocks and three uh, Bitcoin rocks. But we are not uh, putting too much too much attention on the AVS type of the yeah, services. Yeah. So if you follow our Twitter and announcement, you can see we have a, a lot of POS systems and rollups have announced collaboration with Boblo. So they are waiting for our testnet and, and integration guide so that they can integrate with us. So, yeah, the ball is on our court and we have <laughs> very high pressure. Yeah, but I think that's uh, that's really lovely, uh, lovely to hear, and also interesting approach that you go on uh, Cosmos SDK chains um, chains first, or like at least focus uh, focus on that. Yep. Obviously, the D I don't know if you know the DeFi Dojo community, but they are yield hunters all across uh, all across DeFi, so they have a lot of DeFi related questions for you, and one like one projected outlook kind of, uh, because obviously Babylon is not fully live yet. Um, what will be the projected DeFi hub of uh, of Babylon? So where will it be located? Will it be Osmosis? Will it be the Babylon chain itself? Will there, will there be like an ETH or a ETH uh, layer to set, uh, take advantage um, of that? So yeah, where will be most of the Babylon related DeFi activities uh, take place? Um, are there any imaginations for that already? Okay, so uh, to answer this question, I should first uh, position the role of Bobulon in, in the entire Bitcoin ecosystem. Okay. Bobulon itself will be a security sharing marketplace. Okay, it's a marketplace that connects the suppliers with the demands. Okay, supplier will be Bitcoin security, like Bitcoin holders. The demand side will be POS chains and rollups. Yeah, Bobulon will be the uh, a middle layer like a control plane in the middle to help the supply meet the demand okay cool so then in terms of DeFi, all the projects that integrate with Bobulon can have their own DeFi. we will introduce bitcoin liquidity to them so that they can have their own DeFi uh deployed but Bobulon as a, like a marketplace in the middle it will create many cross-chain DeFi opportunities, so which us as the protocol developer, we will not do it. We will leave this opportunity to the, to the developer community, community yeah, to seize the opportunity to build the DeFi applications on top of the Boblin PRS chain itself, especially the cross-chain ones, because there will be many, many chains using Boblin to do security and liquidity so yeah i think that we will only focus on the protocol itself yeah i think that frames it uh, very well and uh, yeah. Yeah, it will be exciting to see um yeah which projects will basically take advantage of this uh, opportunity within this ecosystem um but yeah, um, you created a lot of buzz because people are very, very interested in basically leveraging the liquidity that you've mentioned and leveraging the security that the Bitcoin ecosystem provides. And very recently, Paradigm announced to inject $70 million into the Babylon ecosystem. So can you like talk a little bit about this recent uh, announcement? What made Paradigm so excited about this uh, opportunity to get involved in the Babylon ecosystem, and what's basically the idea now in order to uh, use this, uh, this funds correctly? How do you want to map out the the ecosystem? And yeah, maybe you can draw like a kind of an outlook uh, from here. Yeah, yeah, sure. So uh, yeah, Paradigm led our re uh, most recent round. We raised a total of uh, 70 million, yeah, led by Paradigm. <laughs> Uh, we found a great synergy between ourselves and Paradigm because Paradigm itself is a very research focused and also hardcore uh, VC firm that really appreciates technolo technological innovations. So when they started our, our protocol, our project, our whole design, they realized that yes, Boblin is indeed uh, technically very, very solid and also it address a very big issue of the Bitcoin ecosystem. So that's why 
a paradigm decided to invest in us. And we are very happy that we can partnership, partner with a paradigm on this, on this journey together to further advance our uh, research and development on Bitcoin security protocols. So in, ter in terms of how are we going to spend the fund? Yeah, we are, so most importantly, continue our research and development because Bitcoin staking is really just the start of Bitcoin security sharing. Security sharing. There are so much potential for Bitcoin. Yeah, so we will do, focus on this. And also we will uh, spend more time and resources to build our ecosystem because Bitcoin staking is such a big ecosystem that touches many, many stakeholders. And we talk about validators as friends, right? And wallets, institutional Bitcoin holders, retailer Bitcoin holders, Cosmos chains, ETH roll up, Bitcoin roll up, and also exotic, uh, exotic uh, PR systems. So yeah, many, many things need to be lined up to make this ecosystem self-contained and uh, yeah, grow in a nice way. So we will in, in, like put a lot of resources to help the bootstrap the ecosystem. Yeah, I think uh, that's very, very exciting. And um, I mean, that sounds uh, tremendous. And speaking of bootstrapping, uh, right now, Babylon Testnet 4 is going on. So can you talk a little bit about your takeaways in the current testnet phase, maybe when mainnet? So maybe you also have some updates on this. So yeah, yeah. How, how are things going essentially? Yeah, so testnet for the focus is to test the interaction between Bitcoin holders and the, the Bitcoin chain. So the action space is to, uh, to ask the Bitcoin holders to lock their Bitcoin on Bitcoin chain using our uh, trustless and self-custodial Bitcoin staking script. Okay. The main purpose is to test this interaction and make sure it is secure. And when, while we uh, run this test net, we also invite uh, security audit, uh, auditors to audit our system. We also run public security campaigns using Cantina to invite the public to uh, actually attack our system. Yeah, because we feel Bitcoin staking is so new. It's the first of its kind for decade. So we need to make sure it has a very solid start where the Bitcoin staked is 100% secure. No one can steal it and the Bitcoin can never get lost. Yeah, so we really want to use this test net to make sure the Bitcoin is secure. Yeah. But in terms of mainnet, uh, I don't think I'm in a position to comment it because I'm on the left side. My focus is to design the protocol, implement it, and make sure it is secure. Yeah, I think, um, but I think like um, testnet, uh, like, uh, like the current testnet phase, like demonstrates very well that you guys are on a, on a very good path right now. So, Let's just put it like this. I assume mainnet is not too far away anymore. So um, yeah, I believe like the Bitcoin community and also the broader interchain is um, yeah very very excited about that. Um, mm -hmm. Speaking a little bit of the future, so we touched based uh, on that already. The Bitcoin ecosystem is growing. More and more builders are joining it. So one question that we receive from the community is your personal view. So. What will the Bitcoin layer two slash sidechain landscape look like in 18 months from now? Yeah. 18 months. I think we in about one year to 18 months, we will see uh, more activities and a warmer market, a hotter market for Bitcoin layer twos because by that time, I think Bitcoin staking will be quite mature so that through Bitcoin staking, we can really empower all Bitcoin uh, layer twos with Bitcoin security users and liquidity. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my hope. And this is what <laughs> I'm currently working very hard towards. Yes, understand. Yeah, and um, I, I think like especially like the Bitcoin ecosystem will be very, very interesting 
to watch. Uh, I was really, I have to admit that I was super, super surprised in Denver to learn uh, to learn about how many people started to work in the in the Bitcoin uh, ecosystem. But yeah, um, maybe like uh, one last uh, one last question before wrapping it up here. I think we uh, we provided a very comprehensive overview of uh, the Babylon ecosystem and the broader Bitcoin ecosystem that is evolving right now. So for projects who want to start building now, uh, leveraging Babylon's uh, security setup, um, what's a good way to reach out to get started? Um, yeah, uh, maybe you can you can uh, share some advice here as well. Yeah, sure. Uh, to follow our progress, you can uh, follow our Twitter. If you want to reach out for integration and partnership, you can actually send me a Telegram message. Uh, my Telegram handle handler is Fisher underscore U. So F I S H E R underscore Y U. Yeah, just send me a message. I'm happy to pick up a discussion. That's lovely. You're the very first founder. So I interviewed, I think, like about a hundred people now on the show, and you're the very first person who shared his uh, personal Telegram handle. I think that's uh, that's a big premiere here. But uh, we will certainly uh, link all of that in the description below. So Fisher, yeah, thank you so much for sharing this comprehensive overview of uh, what's about to happen in the Babylon ecosystem. We are very, very excited how the next couple of months uh, will go for Babylon and the broader Bitcoin ecosystem. We also proud participant of the testnet uh, 4. So let's see uh, yeah. how, how, this, uh, how this is going. So yeah, thank you so much for, for coming on at uh, this late hour. And I hope I will see you very soon at some of the conferences. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks so much, Jury. And thanks so much, everyone.